Hello. Now, since we know what a slope of a curve represents and we know the difference between the average rate of change and an instantaneous rate of change, let's have a look at uh, what type of problems we can solve. We are pretty limited because all we discussed is the concepts without actually uh, getting into any detail. We haven't discussed any algebraic um, formula but that doesn't mean that we cannot solve any problem. So let's have a look at this example in which, as you can see, I have a set of uh, values. This is a very plausible situation. Let's say, for example, you conduct an experiment in which you write down these uh, values, just like I did in uh, this table. The first question that is being asked is to determine the average rate of change for the interval 0,4. The average rate of change, as we know, represents nothing else than the slope of the secant that goes through these two points. This problem can be reduced to the simple fact of uh, finding the slope of the line that goes through these two uh, points, the ends of the interval. So I'm going to say average rate of change is delta y over delta x, as we know the definition for the slope. It's really uh, something you've known uh, for a while now. And what is delta y? It's the difference between the y-coordinates of the end of the interval minus the y-coordinate of the beginning of the interval. So as I'm looking in the table, the end of the interval being 4 has a y of 5.1. I'm going to write that down. Minus uh, the beginning of the interval, 0 has the y value 1.1. So that's why I'm having 5.1 minus 1.1 in the numerator and the denominator delta x is going to be the end of the interval 4 minus the beginning of the interval 0. The x coordinates of the points at the end of this interval. So performing the operations now I'm going to end up with 4 over 4 which is equal to 1. And this is my average rate of change for um, this particular situation on that interval 0, 4. Let's try another one. This time I want to calculate the average rate of change for the interval 4, 12. Let's see what happens on this interval. So once again the average rate of change is delta y over delta x is the slope of the secant that goes through these two points the end of the interval. So from the table I can see that the y-coordinates corresponding to 12 and 4 are 3.5 and uh, minus the y-coordinate when x is 4 is 5.1 and the uh, denominator being 12 minus 4, the x-coordinates for those two endpoints. And performing the operation I'm going to end up with minus 1.6 over 8 or minus 0 0.2. So you see this time we have actually a negative we ended up with a negative value. Let's calculate one more average rate of change, this time on the interval 4, 10. And I'm going to apply exactly the same method like before, so the average rate of change is going to be delta y over delta x, but if you look in the table you already see the y values for these endpoints are exactly the same. So delta y is going to be 5.1 minus 5.1 over 10 minus 4 which results into 0 over 6, which is 0. So you can have positive values, negative values, or even 0 for this average rate of change. So the average rate of change uh, shouldn't pose any uh, challenges to anyone, I hope. But in calculus, we are interested uh, mostly about the instantaneous rate of change, not as much about the average rate of change. So let's determine the instantaneous rate of change let's say when x equals 2 because the instantaneous rate of change refers to one single specific point we don't want to work with intervals anymore this starts to be a little more challenging we only know what this instantaneous rate of change means but we don't really have any algebraic way to approach this so we know it's the slope but it's the slope of the tangent to the graph of this function at that particular value when x equals 2. Since we don't have any algebraic way to, to approach these sort of problems just yet, 
we are limited to uh, solve this in a graphical way. So for that reason, what you can do is take these values and uh, plot them on a Cartesian system with the x and y axis. Take all these pairs of uh, coordinates x and y and plot them on the uh, Cartesian system and then uh, to the best of your abilities try to sketch the curve that goes through all these points. Well, I went ahead and I did that. As a matter of fact, I used the calculator to uh, generate this graph to be a lot nicer for you to see, but uh, you can do that as well. You can use a graphical calculator to generate the plot when you have a set of data, or, like I said, simply use uh, pen and paper and uh, plot those uh, points by hand and try to be as accurate as you can. At this stage, the accuracy of your uh, results is going to be dependent on the quality of your uh, sketch. Anyway, uh, this is the result I came up with. You see, it's very much uh, resembling a parabola and you can identify all those uh, coordinates from the table on the graph on this uh, blue curve. Now, what we need to determine is the instantaneous rate of change when x is 2. So the next step in solving this problem would be to create the tangent to the graph of this function when x is 2. So this was my best uh, guess for the tangent to that graph in this point. Now you have to be as precise as you can, but it's still an estimation. We still don't have any uh, tools to sketch this tangent line a lot more accurate than uh, just guessing. Anyway, as soon as you get your uh, tangent, all we need to do now is determine the slope of this tangent. So, you see, it's a very similar problem with what we had um, earlier with the average rate of change, only that uh, this line only has this one single point in common with our uh, function. Uh, in this case, when x is 2. So the point of coordinates 2 and 3.5. In order to determine the slope of this line, I can pick any other point on this line. And that's why I needed a graph, because I don't have any information about any other point in an uh, algebraic way, but I do have all the information I need on this graph that I created now. So I can pick the most convenient point that I can find on that line. So I'm going to pick this uh, point that I mark with uh, green, this green color. And if I look on the x and y axis, the coordinates seem to be exactly 5 and 6.5. So I have two points. I can easily determine the slope of this um, tangent now. So I'm going to say the instantaneous rate of change is delta y over delta x. It seems just like before, but uh, the difference is I only have one point on the graph. The other one is uh, just uh, another point on the tangent line. So the delta y is going to be the y-coordinate of this green point, so 6.5, minus the y-coordinate of the red point, 3.5, over Delta x is going to be the x-coordinate of the green point, so 5 minus the x-coordinate of the red point, 2. And performing the operations, I'm going to end up with 3 over 3, or equal to 1. Let's calculate the instantaneous rate of change when x is 7, for example. Again, I'm going to try to uh, sketch the tangent line to the graph of this function exactly in uh, that point of coordinates x7 and uh, as we can see from the graph y is 6. We notice that this is basically the vertex of that parabola so the tangent line is the horizontal line. Of course I know that uh, the slope of a horizontal line it's going to be 0 but just in case you are wondering why well I can write just like before, instantaneous rate of change is delta y over delta x, and delta y is the difference between the coordinates of this red point, 6, minus the green point, which is 6, over the difference between the x-coordinates of the red point and the green point, so 7 minus 2. 
which results into 0 over 5. In other words, it's 0, as I just said. So that's what happens when uh, you are at the peak of that parabola. Let's try to determine the instantaneous rate of change when uh, x is 12. Once again, I'm going to try to sketch the best tangent line I can uh, estimate at that point in particular. Also look for the most convenient point on this uh, tangent line to determine the slope easier. So I'm going to take this point uh, which uh, seem to be of coordinates uh, 10 and 5.5. Uh, Seems like a good uh, match. So the instantaneous rate of change in this case is going to be delta y over delta x which represents 3.5, the y-coordinate of the red point, minus 5.5 over 12 minus 10, the difference between the x-coordinates of the two points. That results into minus 2 over 2 which is minus 1. And this is how we solve problems with the very little knowledge that we have so far. We can approach these sort of problems in which we either have a set of data or we have directly a graph on which we can sketch the secants or uh, tangents to the graph of the function. It's all reduced to calculating the slope of a line. It's uh, just that you have to be careful what is the line that you are selecting. You have to know the difference between secants and tangents and what they represent and try to be as accurate as you can be on the graphs that uh, either are given to you or you create yourself based on uh, data that is given to you or you collect on your own. So let's conclude this example here. Thanks for watching.